Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is using control break logic to split data in ITX. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. I'm going to start this demonstration in the Design Studio. As you can see, I have created one project called Control Break. This project currently has no files in it. Over in my Windows File Explorer, I'm going to create one text input file called input.txt. I'm going to populate this file with information that I've stored in my clipboard. This information is just a bunch of records which indicates people and the group to which they belong. Each line has the group followed by a comma followed by their first name. Now that that file has been saved, back in my control break project, I refresh. It then appears in the miscellaneous section and I'm going to open it. This is just going to stay on the screen as a reminder of what the input is. Let's move on to creating a type tree to read those records. Right click type tree, choose new type tree, and I'm going to call my type tree input.mtt. I'm going to add an object. This object I'm going to call file. This is going to be a group object. I'm now going to add another object. This is going to be called row. And again, it is going to be a group level object. I'm going to add a, another object called fields. This is going to remain a category. And within that field, I'm going to add my individual fields. So my first field, I'm going to call color group. And I'm going to change it from category to item. My next field I'm going to add is called first name. Again, changing to item. So for the moment, we have all of the objects that we need. Now I just need to create some logical structure for those. Within the row object, I'm going to want to see color group and first name. Each one of those is going to be found a minimum of one and a maximum of one. So I'm just going to set the range as one to one. I'm going to do the same for first name. So that's the structure of row completed. So let's save that. And let's go into the file object and say that within file I'm going to see multiple rows. Right click, set the range. There could be no rows, so I'm going to set the minimum as zero. And I'm going to set the maximum to infinity, which is denoted with an S. OK, so that's that. If we open file again and expand rows, you will see that within rows we've got color group and first name. So let's put some properties in these objects so that it can correctly read the file. So the row object is currently set to an implicit format. I'm going to change that to explicit. It's going to be not fixed, but delimited. And the delimiter is going to be infix, and it's going to be a literal comma. So it's going to be expect to see a comma in between those two row objects. I'm also going to add a terminator, a literal terminator, of a new line character. So this is a row completely defined. It has color group, first name, it is going to be delimited with commas and end with a new line. Now the file object is just an implicit sequence of objects, so it's just going to expect to find zero or many rows. So I believe this type tree is complete. I'm going to go into the tree menu, analyze structure and logic to see if I've made any mistakes. It says no. So let's save this. And then let's create a map source file to see if I can read this input with the type tree I've just created. 
new map source. I'm going to call this test.mms. Within test.mms, I'm going to create my first map. I'm going to call that test1. I'm going to create an input card called in1. The type tree to be used is input.mtt. The root object to read is a file. And the file to read is input.txt. Now, if we save, build, and run, you will see that we get the input valid but unknown data found issue. Now, if we turn on tracing, we can see what went wrong. We'll turn on all tracing for all input cards. Save, build, and run. Now the trace file has been produced. Let's drag the input over to here to keep it as a reminder on screen. And then on this window, let's have a quick look at that trace file. Okay, so it's reading in blue as the color group and Paul as the first name. Then it says that this data, blue Paul, was found to be a row. Then it reads blue Steve and says blue Steve is a row and continues in this fashion all the way to the bottom where it says that orange and max were found, the last row. Orange was found to be color group. Max was found to be first name, but then the end of data was reached without finding a terminator. So this is my mistake. On the input side, I don't have the final terminator on this file. So let's go into that file, add the final terminator, save the file, close the trace, run the map again, and now the map completes successfully. Okay, so we are reading our input rows successfully. However, this entire demonstration is about control break logic. So, how do we get into that? Well, before we move forward, I'm going to create a generic utility type tree, and I'm going to use it to count objects. Right click, new type tree. I'm going to call it util, stick it in the control break project, and I'm just going to add one object and I'm going to call it number item. I'm going to make this an item object and instead of the default text, I'm going to change it to a number. Okay, so we have a generic utility type tree to use here for the moment. I'm going to analyze structure and logic and I'm going to save the file and close that type tree. I'm going to create a temporary output card here, which is going to count my input objects for me. I'm going to use the util type tree that I created just now, the number object, and I'm going to create a file called count rows.txt. So what do we put here? We use the count function. What are we counting? We're counting rows. Drag and drop the row object there. Save, build, run. Over in the miscellaneous section, we have a count rows.txt has just appeared. Let's open that file. I'm going to drag input down here just to be out of the way. We're going to concentrate on this output for the moment, count rows. We're seeing 12 rows. Okay, let's move forward to the control break logic side of things. We need to amend the input type tree slightly to add another level and within that level the actual control break logic goes to ensure that this splits into different objects depending on which color group it belongs to. Let's open the type tree now. Create another level of object. I'm going to call this color grouping. Now color grouping I'm going to make into a group object. It's going to be sequence implicit still, but I want to insert this between file and row. So at the moment, file contains multiple rows. So let's instead make it contain multiple color groupings. Set range 0 to S and make a color grouping contain multiple rows. Set range 0 to S. So I've inserted this group that's an implicit group between those two objects that already existed. If we open file now, we will see color groupings, then within that rows, then within that the individual fields. Okay, we need to give 
color groupings a little bit more structure. So within color groupings, let's say that you become a new color grouping whenever this rule is not true. I'm going to put a component rule here. I'm going to paste it from my clipboard. What we're saying is that from the current row, which is dollar, look at the color group field and see if it's equal to the color group field from the last row. And if it is, then it's part of the same group. Otherwise, it's not. The component rule is not valid. We break out of this object and then we go back to the file level object where it goes to the next control break group. OK, let's close and save that. We'll analyze structure and logic again and save the type tree. Back in our map, we can now either count rows or we can count color groups. So let's count rows again, just to check that we're still reading the same number of rows. Save, build, run. The map has completed successfully and we're still reading 12 rows. Let's just overwrite that with some zeros, save that and just run that one more time, just show you that changes to 12 again. We are reading 12 rows. Okay, but how many color groupings are there? Let's go in our count function and drag in the group instead, color grouping in one. Save, build and run. We can see now that it is actually successfully read three different color groups, blue, green and orange. Okay, so let's try separating out those color groupings using another output card to write that data to three different files. Okay, on the output side, I'm going to rename this card to out1 so that we can have an out2. But before I go into out2, I need to create a type tree. Let's create that type tree now. New type tree. Let's call this type tree output.txt. Okay, I'm going to add a file level object. This needs to be a group. Again, we're going to be sequence implicit. And then within that, we're going to have just a simple text item. I'm not going to bother putting it into a category for now. Let's create a structure. Within file, we have multiple text items. The range is going to be from 0 to S. Save the type tree. Analyze. Save. Close and create our new output card. Output card 2. The type tree we're going to use is output.txt.mtt. I don't know why I named it like that. It doesn't matter. And the structure is going to be the file, and the file we're going to create, well, this is going to be just out dummy.txt because it's not the actual output, as you'll see in a moment. OK, within this, we have got a repeating group. We're going to drop down to this repeating group for every color grouping. So let's create a functional map call here equals function underscore each color grouping. So this functional map will execute three times. We already know it's going to be three times because we've done a count and the count has told us that there's three. Let's create that functional map with the functional map wizard. Create close. Down at the functional map level we can see that we can do something in this output side. And what we're going to do is we're going to put all this information to a file. Equals put. So I have my put function. The first argument is the adapter to use, which is file. The second argument is going to be the file name. Now the file name I'm going to derive partly from a fixed object and partly from an entry in the data. So we're going to have output underscore then we're going to concatenate the color group into the name. And then we're getting it with .txt. Now the third argument to this function is the actual content of that file. Now I'm going to bring in first name. Now if I just drag first name in here, unfortunately this will bring only the first first name. So let's convert this series object to just a standard text object for now. I'm grabbing all of the first names and putting them into a file called output underscore blue.txt. 
and then the next time this functional map is called it's going to be called output underscore green dot txt and then finally output underscore orange dot txt save and build and run so we have one file called output dummy created that contains absolutely nothing because the put rule doesn't do anything to return anything to the map that's fine but you'll notice three files have been produced output blue output green and output orange let's have a look at output blue we have John okay so something's gone wrong series to text uh, did not work so let's change the rule to instead just package everything that's in one at this point and let's save build and run again and there we go on the output we've got the information that I wanted in output blue we see the entire blue group has been listed in output green we see the entire green group has been listed and finally in output orange the entire orange group has been listed so there we go our control break logic is successfully splitting the input data based on the information in the rows itself now what happens when this information is not sorted let's say we have blue jane right in the middle of the greens well that's when we start to see some weird save build and run save the input save build and run the map again now we see that the count is five now there are not five groups but it changed five times there was a blue group then there was a green group then there was a blue group then a green group and finally an orange group what does that do to the individual files well the second time that blue was run blue jane it would have overwritten the information in the first time it was found so this will only contain one row blue jane in green we will find only two rows sorry three rows because the first two have been overwritten the second time that green has been found there we go only three rows and the final file orange contains the correct data because they're obviously all in sequence one after the other so it is important when using control break logic that the data is sorted so that they're all at least grouped together and you can do that with a simple sort function before reading the data at this point if necessary there we go using transformation extender input type tree properties for control break logic to split data I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button, perhaps leave a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.